hello everyone. How's everyone doing this evening? Welcome. Hola. We want to welcome those that are watching us uh, live. Um, I believe God has something good for us this uh, this night. And I think uh, tonight is the last uh, series of growth. And so um, if you're watching this live, real quick, you can go get your pencil, paper, so write this uh, information down. It's real good. And so uh, before we start, and uh, before we start worship, let's all, if y'all want to please stand up and uh, let's position ourselves before the Lord and, uh, and just enter into his presence and just uh, as we worship this evening. Father, we thank you, Lord. Uh, we just thank you, Father, for what you're going to do tonight. And Father, we just pray, Lord, uh, for this evening, Lord, that we just pray, Holy Spirit, come. We invite you to come into this place. Come and work in our hearts. Come. Uh, we just want to just openly open our hearts unto you. We position ourselves to you, Lord, this night, Father, to praise your holy name, Lord. And Father, we just ask, Lord, for those that are watching live, Lord, that you would just supply every need, Lord. You know those needs, Father. And even in this house, Lord. And Lord, we thank you, Father, for allowing us, Father, to come into your presence and, and just to spend time with you, Lord. And, and Lord, we just thank you for that. Thank you, Jesus. And we pray for the children, Lord, as they are in their classes, for the youth and for those teachers, Lord God. We just pray for your Holy Spirit to just fill this campus, Lord Almighty God. We thank you, Father. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus. And everyone says, amen. Let's worship.
Thank you, Danny. <laughs> Wow, praise the Lord. Okay? All right, good deal. Glad we got a pastor that knows <laughs> what to do <laughs> in, in, things like, in times like this. All right, I just want to pray. Uh, there's already such a, a, a heavy spirit of the Holy Spirit here right now, but uh, let's just pray, okay? <clears throat> Heavenly Father, uh, so thank you for tonight, and I thank you for each person that's here. I know that every person is here online and uh, in the sanctuary that needs to be to hear this message, to hear this teaching, to hear this word uh, from your word and from your heart. Holy Spirit, I just ask that you come with your uh, healing power, the manifested healing power of the Holy Spirit in each of our lives as we uh, address emotional trauma. In Jesus' mighty name. And, oh, Holy Spirit, ask that you help me. Help me to make this clear so uh, people can understand. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. I can say welcome. This is the last one of our Freedom and Fullness um, teachings. And except tomorrow night at 7 p.m. in the CE building, I hope everyone that has been to, the, to coming consistently will please try to make it. You will not regret it if you do. It's, it's going to be similar to what we're doing here. You're going to be, you're going to be doing some prayers and uh, using your authority and telling, uh, you know, any kind of uh, oppressing spirit that's been bothering you in your, your life, you're going to tell them to go. And we just agree with you. And it's very, uh, it's nothing scary, nothing spooky, just, <laughs> just, uh, just the way Jesus was, the way Jesus did things. You know, he said with a word and they left. So I want to uh, invite you to come at 7 p.m. if you can at all. And uh, you, you won't regret it. You're going to learn. You're going to learn about root spirits. You're also going to learn about uh, some more things about uh, open doors in your life that will help you keep your doors closed. So just more information that you'll learn. Okay, tonight, emotional trauma. Uh, in, on page 54 in your book, everybody who has a workbook, uh, I don't particularly want you just to follow along everything, but there's the definition of emotional trauma, wounds and bruises to the heart through emotional shock, through emotional or physical abuse, great loss or sudden physical injuries or shock that cause lasting damage to the psychological, spiritual, or emotional well-being, development or well-being of a person. God cares about you. He cares about everything you've been through. I think sometimes we think he doesn't care. You know, we've been taught that he's way up there, or we felt he's way up there, and we're way down here, and he doesn't care about all these little things we go through. Guess what? He does. Um, back, And I've shared this about my testimony. When um, I was going to a church, and the pastor one day said, Ask God to show you your heart. So I was just sitting in church, and so I just, he said, close your eyes and ask God to show you your heart. So I closed my eyes, and I asked God to show me my heart. And I've shared this before, but what I saw was something that looked like a piece of round steak that had been beat with a hammer. Have you ever seen those hammers that had the indentions in them? I'm not sure exactly what you call them, where you tenderize meat. And my grandmother would just beat and beat and beat and beat on that uh, round steak till it was so tender when she made the chicken fried steak. Well, that, but that is what my heart looked like. And I was shocked. Of course, this was my spiritual heart. It wasn't my physical heart. It was my spirit. 
So, uh, and then he said, then when you ask the Lord to heal your heart, and that's when that I started my journey of that, like six months every night going home and laying before the Lord and asking him to heal my heart. I was 50 years old. I had never gone to the Lord and asked him to heal my heart before. So I had a lot of healing that needed to be done, and a lot was done, and the trajectory of my life changed. I, my life became more successful, more joyful, more happy, and all these wonderful things happened after that, but still everything wasn't healed yet. Because if you are like me, which the majority of you are, you're stuffers, you stuff stuff. And as good Texans, if we go through a hard time, we pull up our bootstraps and we go right on. <laughs> you know, we suck it up and we go on. We don't sit and dwell or we don't, you know, that's what we do. We did that to survive and we were able to survive, but yet there's brokenness and woundedness stuff that is still in our hearts and there's like scabs and scars on it. And what we want to do is kind of pull the scar and pull the scab back and invite Holy Spirit to come in and heal, okay? Does that sound like a good deal? Then we get healed, and then a lot of these behaviors that we do, well, they'll go away. Praise God. Um, Luke 4, 18, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. This, you know, Jesus read this. But guess what? When Jesus left, he said, okay, I've come to do this, but now I'm leaving, and now the Spirit of the Lord's on you to do these same things. Well, if we're going to heal the brokenhearted, then we've got to get our broken hearts healed. We can't heal our broken heart, but we know somebody who can. Hallelujah. So God does care for you. Hebrews 4, 15 through 16. Uh, just paraphrasing it, it, it says that we've got a, a high priest who sympathizes with our pain and he understands our pain and he tells us to come boldly to the throne of God so we can receive mercy and we can receive grace. So praise God. That's what we're going to do. There's two kinds of wounds. Those we have a part in making those that, uh, and, and I, I had those kind of wounds, and that examples are like maybe an abortion you chose to have. Well, you had a part in that, and maybe you felt pressured and you didn't think there was any way out. Um, maybe you were young and your parents almost forced you to do it, but still you had a part in that situation. Or maybe it was a divorce that happened. And maybe the divorce would be because you were unfaithful. But it might not be because you were unfaithful. It might be because you did not ask God who to marry. <laughs> you didn't wait on God and let him bring your spouse to you. So uh, divorce also is, uh, is the kind of wound that we have a part in making. But it causes trauma. There's great trauma in divorce uh, to your soul, to your spirit, to your family. And then there's those that we have no part in making, and that's like rape and molestation, abandonment, miscarriages, death, accidents, and parents that didn't show you any love. All, the, all that's traumatic, and you had no part in it. And we can't just sweep these things under the rug. One way you know that you're not healed is because there's emotions still attached to those memories. If you think about that, there's still some emotions there. On page 55, you'll see that there, um, we're going to look at some type B traumas. There's type A and there's type B, but we're going to go with type B first. Um, abuse. Uh, and type B is bad things that should never have happened to you. And if you don't, and I'd like for you to get your ministry sheet out, that 91, page 91, if you'll get that sheet out so you can write as the Holy Spirit brings to your mind trauma that you've gone through in your life, you can write those down. But type B trauma is the bad things that should never happen. It's abuse, physical, mental, mental sexual, violence. It could be violence that was done to you. It could be violence that you witnessed as a child or as an adult, mugging, abandonment, accidents, rape, rejection, fearful experiences, domination and control. Someone controlled you uh, totally, and, uh, and that also will cause, it's trauma, it's traumatic. We weren't meant to be controlled by another man. 
uh, molest or another woman, <laughs> molestation, divorce, death of close family members, near-death experiences, betrayal by family or friends. We have developed coping skills, like I said earlier, by pushing things down, but behaviors can, will surface. Do you ever see when you get angry for no reason? Or have you known people that would just, they just get furious and you think, well, why did they get mad over that? Or they, or they would get real anxious and real nervous and, uh, and, and be ashamed and, and be so insecure. And you think, well, why? Why? Or, or why am I like that? Well, many times it's because of the pain and the, uh, the emotional trauma that you've pushed down and it's never been healed. And it will come out, but it comes out in behaviors. And all, have you ever heard anybody say, don't push my buttons? But they push my buttons. Well, guess what? As Christians, we're not supposed to have buttons. If somebody pushes us, they, they're touching Jesus and out comes love. But so that way you know that if you've got buttons, you've got tender spots and somebody punches it and then you may get mad or you may get scared. Type A trauma, we're going to type A trauma, is the lack of good things that we all need, basic love and nurturing. They, this causes us just as much trauma as uh, type B but it's not looked at as close because it doesn't seem as drastic, but it is. If you grew up in a home, and it might have been what everyone else would thought was a good home. Maybe you had clothes, maybe you had everything that you needed, you had, you were, had a, they sent you to school, you had a good education, you had food, you had a nice home, you were warm, you, you, know, you had what you needed, but they were so busy making a living that they didn't have time to love you and to hold you and to care for you, that is a type A trauma. And it'll follow you your whole life. And you'll see kids who grew up in wonderful homes and yet they resent their parents. Why is that? Because they never got that love that they needed. Um, also, parents who are perfectionist and can never give their children approval. The kids feel like they can never measure up, so they feel unloved. And that's trauma, and it counts, and God cares. The parents didn't know, most of us didn't know what we were doing. Uh, I know I did not receive the love that I needed as a child, but I cannot blame my parents because they did not receive the love that they needed when they were children. So we weren't taught how to love, and then in turn, I did not love my children the way they needed to be loved. And here it comes down, comes down the generational line. Here comes this people, each, each generation not showing love, not knowing how to show love. And guess what? If you haven't, if you don't have love, how can you give it? You can't give what you don't have. There's only one person that we can receive this love you think, okay, I wasn't loved as a child, so I'm just a mess up, and I'm going to be messed up my whole life. There's no hope for me. Well, that's not true. <laughs> because guess what? God knew when Adam sinned what was coming down. Do you know how horrified? And I mean, I know God, I don't, I'm not saying God gets horrified, but can you imagine if we were standing there and we saw Adam and we knew what was going on and we knew what he just did to the whole human race, him and Eve? You know, they didn't even understand fully what they did. But if we do, we would have been horrified because we could have seen in our mind's eye and our imagination down the generations all the hurt and the pain and the, and the, the way when sin came in and how people would hurt each other and not love each other. But there is one way to get that love that you so desperately want, that I so desperately want, that you so desperately want, and that is from God the Father. And it's a supernatural love, and he has it there, and he provided. And when he saw what Adam did, he said, okay, I'm going to have a second Adam that's going to come, and he's going to be able to heal the wounds that will be inflicted because of sin that came into the world. 
Isaiah 61, 2 through 3, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He planned, he planned for our healing when he saw that we would be wounded. A wound in an open heart is just, in your spirit, is just a place for a demon spirit. <laughs> They're assigned to come and lie to you and to get, and, and they, they feed off of those wounds. And that's where, um, so, but we're exposing them tonight. Hallelujah. Psalms 27.10 says, When my mother and father forsake me, the Lord will take me up. So if you've ever been forsaken, and no matter how good parents are, they're not perfect parents, and there's going to be things when you've experienced some trauma that will need healing. But God has made provision. You may be tough on the outside. You know, like I said, pull up your bootstraps. We've been told it's cool to be tough. You know, you be tough. It's good. You'll make it in this life. My daddy used to say that'll make you tough. When we, if we got hurt or anything, that'll make you tough. And he was right, and it does help to be tough, but you can be tough on the outside and bleeding on the inside and a mess and uh, not a success in life. So we know that only God can heal the emotionally hurting person. It was a part of Jesus' ministry. Joel 2.25 so I will restore to you the years that the swarming locusts have eaten, the crawling locusts, the consuming locusts, and the chewing locusts. I loved this scripture when I read it. I loved it. I thought, whoa. So he can restore. There's restoration. Just because I got a big old mess back there doesn't mean that I don't, he can't just restore it all like that never happened. And he has done so much of that in my life. I got a testimony, friends. He will do it. Hallelujah. And I like this uh, swarming locust in the uh, King James. Uh, the second one, it says the swarming locust and the canker worm. And that canker worm just really stuck with me. Because <laughs> I thought, you know what? That's what I think was in my life was a canker worm. <laughs> I picked that one out. So, uh, and I looked up what a canker worm is. And it's really just a caterpillar that just eats everything in sight. <laughs> it's just a worm and it eats everything. We have all been victimized. Everybody in this room has been victimized. However, it is our choice to remain a victim. You don't have to stay a victim. You, it, it's when you give up and stay a victim. Victims believe that because of their past, they can never go on and have a future. They think because of the things in their past, they can never be what God has called them to be. Because you've been rejected or abused, you just feel like God just canceled his plans. Or maybe you just was a big old mess up like I was. Then you think, there's no way I can never, uh, I can never be what God called me to be. I know I felt that calling, but I can't be it because look what I did. I messed up. And you'll have the old enemy whispering in your ear and going, yep, that's right. You can never be anything. You can never do what God called you to do. Look what you've done. You can never have a successful life or a happy home. But it's, it's lies. It's lies of the enemy because God is the restorer. And we're not responsible. For, you're not responsible. If, God, if somebody does something wrong to you, but you are responsible to how you respond to it. <laughs> Hallelujah. We don't have to stay a victim. Romans 8.28 and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. You can cover your sin, and we've talked about that. You cover your sin. You hide it from God like Adam and Eve tried to do, <laughs> and you get to keep it. You can cover your pain from God and from everybody, and guess what? You get to keep it. We live in a sin-cursed world laden with evil, and it touches all of us, and it touches our children, but God is not to blame, and he's the one that we go to to be healed. 
Your responsibility is to come to Jesus. That's all of our responsibility is to come to Jesus. And we don't just come to Jesus like even once a week. We go to him immediately. We go to him every day. We invite him in to cleanse and to, and to heal every day. You know, a lot of people, they go to psychologists. And they go to psychologists, they go to psychiatrists, they go to counselors to help them. And yeah, it helps to vent. And, it, and they can find, maybe they can find where your root problem is. They can find that place in your childhood where the trauma came in. But guess what? They can't heal it. They can give you some medicine that'll kind of mask it over. Or, um, or you can just keep going to them, but they cannot heal it. The only person, the only one that can heal those wounds is Jesus. It's God. It's the Holy Spirit. He's the only one who can heal. And there is no pain so deep that God can't heal it. No, no a horrible thing that has been, be done, been done to you that God cannot heal. I don't know how many of you have heard the story of Corey Ten Boone. Uh, she wrote The Hiding Place. She was a, uh, a Dutch her that would go out and, 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 and help find the Jewish people and they would put them and send them to farms and where they would hide them and, and let them be farm workers out on the farms and different things like that so they wouldn't be sent to concentration camps and killed. And also uh, there was an orphanage and she took in like a hundred babies and she had the, people, the, the people that were working with her, all of them risking their lives every day, took those babies to different homes out in the country and would say, would you take this baby? Otherwise this baby will be killed. And so she was a, a hero, but she got betrayed and her whole family did and they wound up in a concentration tr camp and they were treated horribly. I mean, horrible that, read the book. <laughs> Actually, uh, I just watched a testimony of hers talking to uh, Catherine Kuhlman. And it was a live testimony, and it was on Facebook. There's some good stuff on Facebook. <laughs> and I shared it. And it is, if you get a chance to see that interview, it is awesome. When you look at this woman, and she tells about her sister Betsy, who they were 50 years old when they went to the concert. They were in their 50s when they went to the concentration camp, and Betsy was beat every day because she couldn't shovel. She was weak, and she couldn't shovel the sand fast enough. So they, the, the guard would beat her. This one, he would beat her. She would come in every evening, beat. They lived in flea-infested uh, uh, bunk, bunk houses. It was horrific. Uh, 95,000 women were killed uh, around the age of Corey Ten Boone. Well, she come out alive, but her sister didn't. Her sister died. But when you listen to the story of what they did, they had Bible study in the, that bunkhouse every day. They'd do it twice a day. Her and Betsy, they would take turns teaching the other woman, women about the love of Jesus. And, they would, and you can tell by looking at this woman that she had gone through the most horrible thing that you could imagine. And yet... I was watching her testimony, and she had a smile on her face, and she could talk about Sister Betsy forgiving the man that would beat her, and she'd say, I feel so sorry for him, is what her sister would say. I feel so sorry for him, because she knew that he was the one <laughs> that was in horrible danger of hell, not her. You know, she was innocent, but... Anyway, it's an amazing story. And Corey Dean Boone said, there's no pit so deep that God's love is not deeper still. So tonight, I want to teach y'all some things that I've learned about getting healed inside. And one way is just to get in front of the Lord and say, Lord, heal me. <laughs> get alone, Lord, heal, heal me, heal me. And many times I'll tell him, oh, Lord, I'm such a mess. But I hear him whisper, you're my mess. <laughs> Not that he made me a mess, but I belong to him. And he loves me. And he wants to heal me. And he wants to heal you. And if you're feeling like a mess tonight, he's your, you're his mess. He loves you. He wants to heal you. And I want to just show you, um, I've got, uh, we've got a prayer that we're going to pray. But we're also, I brought an intervention. It's called an intervention. And I want to do this with you and just kind of teach you, okay? Are y'all ready for this? It is a way that you can uh, invite the Holy Spirit to come 
and heal inside. So if you'll just kind of close your eyes and relax. Did ever oh, oh wait, did everybody write down something on their ministry sheet, some trauma in your life? It can be it can be big, it can be little. Okay, okay, just close your eyes and you pick out one of those traumas that you want the Lord to heal tonight. Now I want you to ask Holy Spirit to take you back to that time when the hurt or the betrayal, the offense occurred. And to be sure and get in touch with the way you felt at that time. And Holy Spirit, I just ask that you come and do this work. Without you, this is just a silly little exercise. But with you, it's so powerful because you've done it in my life many times. Okay, when you get there to that place and you're in touch with how you felt, the feelings, the emotions that you felt at that time when this uh, emotional wound ha happened to you, ask Holy Spirit if there's anyone you need to forgive that caused this hurt. It could be yourself. It could be someone else. So if there is someone, then you just say, uh, I forgive whoever it is. I let them go free. I hold nothing to their charge. I require nothing of them, Father. Because you've forgiven me, I forgive them. Once you do that, and ask the Holy Spirit if there's any word vows that you made at the time of the hurt. This is something new the Lord showed me. He showed me I'd made some vows when I was hurt. You break those word vows in the name of Jesus. It could be one like, no one loves me. No one protects me. They always overlook me or hurt me. They don't care. You say, I break those word vows in the name of Jesus. They, ha they, ha they will not dictate my life. I break them. I call them null and void in the mighty name of Jesus. After you've forgiven and you've broken the word vows, I want you to look and see where Jesus was when this hurt and offense occurred. Many of you will see him. You'll see him in the, you'll see him. Some of you will just, you, some of you will feel him. Some of you will just know by faith that he was there because he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You are his. He knew you were his from the minute you were conceived. You have to accept Jesus, but yet he knew you were marked. If you can't see him, then you can do it by faith. Okay, once you locate Jesus by faith or seeing him, then I want you to start to pull out of your soul and your spirit with your hands. It's a prophetic act, but it's real. Pull out the pain. Pull out the hurt. Come on. It's not silly. It's real. You're pulling it out of your spirit. It's a prophetic act. Like baptism is a prophetic act. This is a prophetic act. And you just pull out the hurt. Pull out the pain. Pull out the discouragement. Pull it all out and give it to him. Keep pulling it out till it's all gone. Once you get all of it out, all the pain, just keep on pulling till you get it all out. When you get it all out, then you ask the Holy Spirit to come. Say, Holy Spirit. Everybody just say, Holy Spirit, come and heal my soul all the way to my spirit and back again. And you stay there and you let the Holy Spirit heal. Let him heal your heart. Let him heal your soul. Let him heal your spirit, and you stay there as long as you need to stay. And he will heal you. He will heal you. He will heal you. <laughs> and then you'll have that oil of joy. Then you'll have, that's where he gives you the dancing. <laughs> that's where he gives you the peace 
that peace that passes understanding because that wound has been healed. Okay. I have the instructions listed for this intervention right down here. So after, after we're through, if y'all want to come down and get one of these, because you can do this at home. You can do it for you. It helps when somebody working with you. It's really good when somebody works. But you can do it at home by yourself, for yourself. Because I have. Recently I did, and the Lord started showing me new things, and he told me to break those word vows that I made when I was a little girl. So we've got layers that have been there for many, many years, if you're any age at all, because we've not been taught to go immediately to Jesus like Corey Ten Boone and her sister did. They went immediately to Jesus when they were going through some of the most horrible hurts and disjustice, injustice, uh, that we can, injustice that we can imagine. Dan's going, yeah, Donna, you got it right that time. <laughs> injustice <laughs> um, that you can imagine. But they went to Jesus every day and said, heal me. And some of us have got a lot of work to do. So we're going to have to go to Jesus quite a bit and get healed. <laughs> okay. But we've got a prayer that we want to pray this prayer. We're going to pray this prayer together, and it's powerful. Why is it powerful? Because Holy Spirit here is and he's going to do the work, okay? So I want you to open your... You've already got your hearts open, okay? You've got your hearts open. And we're going to pray. You're going to repeat this prayer after me, all right? And I ask the Holy Spirit to come and heal the emotional wounds and bruises so that we quit bleeding on the inside. And as, we, and as, you, as you pray this prayer, you're going to let go, going to let go of the pain and release the emotions and receive the healing. Lord Jesus, I open my heart to you I open every room, every closet, every hidden place. I thank you that you love me and that you went to the cross so that I could be whole in spirit, soul and body. Spirit of God, please invade every dark place and shed your light deep within my heart. Lord, all the pain I have experienced, I give to you. All the rejection, the hurt, the betrayal, every abuse, every wounding, I give to you. Now I speak to the pain deep within. Even that which is so repressed I'm no longer aware of it. And I say, pain, come up. Come up and be healed. Come up. I give the pain to you. And I ask you to take it now. I release it all to you, Lord. Pour your healing love into every bruised place. You carried my shame and my defilement. You carried my rejection so I could be free. I can't live with this pain any longer. I don't want to, Lord. I let it all go. I give it to you. I hold nothing back. I pour it all out. And right now, prophetically, I just pull out the daggers out of your soul and out of your spirit that's been shot in there by the enemy. And you can take your hand and pull them out. You can pull out those daggers that have been shot into you. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. What a beautiful Savior we serve. What provision that Father God has made for us. We don't have to keep hurting. We don't have to. I'm through. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, I just want to speak to something real quickly here. You know, um, you might be like me. Maybe you never had 
an abusive situation or you never had some kind of real trauma like that. But um, what I had to realize, and I had to deal with this, and I, I can say thank God because I have dealt with it years ago, but it took a long time. Um, when After my mother died, my mother had 90 days in the hospital, and then she passed away. And, and, uh, and we knew that was coming, right? And we tried to prepare for it as best we can. But less, a little bit less than three years later, um, I was in here preaching on a Wednesday night, and my dad went home to be with Jesus. And I talked to him on Monday, and, uh, and then after church, when I walked out, they met me in my office and said, hey, they found your dad dead today. And, uh, you know, he went to heaven. He, it's an amazing uh, guy. Anyway, it took me years. It took years for that emotional trauma to catch up to me. It took years. And when it finally did, it, it, was, it was devastating to me. And, and to, to be able to be healed from that, to be able to say, because, I mean, I, I had to years ago, and I just rewrote what I wrote years ago tonight. Was First of all, I had to forgive my dad because I was mad at him. How dare you? leave me. How dare you leave me when I wasn't through with you? How selfish is that, right? But that's what I did. And then, and then I had to say, which is really hard, because we dealt with this a couple of weeks ago, maybe, or last week, I had to forgive God, because I was mad at God. And that was the hardest part. You know, when you're a pastor, you can't be mad at God. I mean, you're a Christian, right? You can't be mad at God, but I was mad at God, and it took me a long time to honestly admit that. Donna, to be able to just say, Father, I'm, I'm ticked at you. I mean, how dare you, God? And, you know, then I, now I can look back and go, wow, how selfish was that? But then, you know, I had to forgive me because I allowed those things to be in me, and I had to release myself. And I, uh, this was one of the best things you shared in the spirit of the Lord that you shared it in tonight, that, you know, every one of us bears, has a mark somewhere in our life. And, you know, I don't care how perfect your life may seem or not. Every one of us has, a, has loss and has grief and has something that was taken from us or, or, or that, you know, like so many things in my life, I gave up to the enemy because I was such a knothead. But can I just tell you, God, God wants to bring healing, and this was really powerful tonight. And if we'll, you know, you're watching online and, uh, or you're in this room, you know, you, this is an opportunity for you. And, and let me just give you this. It's not a one and done thing. This is going to be a process because it took me, I'm, I'm ashamed to admit it, but seven or eight years to finally come to the realization and another traumatic situation, the death of a loved one for me to just get hit head on with this, what I had been holding in my heart and how I was offended at God and offended at my dad. And so I want to encourage you, this is a first step for you maybe. Uh, if you're here in the sanctuary, you're watching online, this is a first step to try to really even process some of that stuff. Because Donna, like, like you, I had a lot of behaviors that were results of that stuff. And, and you know, the, um, I've never been the one, I always talk about my feelings and my emotions, but boy, I tell you, I stuffed that for a long time. And we were building a church and man, things were going. But I want to encourage you tonight. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Let the Holy Spirit just open up and just deal with you. And I, and I really, I think it's good. In fact, I've, I, I, you reminded me of something, and then I'm going to let Chris close the service. But when I was first saved, this crazy friend and I who got saved with me, I mean, we both got saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. And we were just crazy for Jesus. And we would be driving down the road, and all of a sudden, he would reach up to his mind, to his head, and he would go, come out, and he would do something like that, and, you know, we would swerve in the car, and I was like, what is wrong with you, and he goes, man, I'm casting down every evil imagination, I'm having thoughts that I don't need to have, so I'm just physically grabbing them and throwing them out, and, you know, you could say, well, that's kind of weird, well, yeah, it's certainly undignified, but you know what, it might help you, <laughs> it just might help you to physically lay hold of it and go, nope, letting it go. So I want to thank you tonight. Can we give the Lord and Donna a round of applause? And Chris is going to come and close. I want to encourage you, just begin the journey to emotional freedom. God has freedom for you, and he has a way for you to get free. And what you have to do is get to the foot of the cross and find him. He will make a way of freedom for you in Jesus' name. Thank you. Aren't y'all glad that uh, when Jesus ascended to heaven, 
But he said that he was going to send us the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine what would have taken place if that would have happened? If we are a wreck here and don't have nothing to fall on as our helper or comforter, God, the way he designed the universe, spoke everything into existence, made man out of his own image, and then offers his son to die for our sins. And then his son goes to be with the Father and sends the Holy Spirit. Isn't that awesome? I believe that God, uh, the Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit did something tonight. Whether he was in this house or somebody watching. And 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 just the uh, there's so much more. I I would advise you to read these. I went through this program here, and I'll tell you what. <laughs> I wish that everybody would sign up because there are some things that I never knew that I that were that were there. There were webs. There were stuff there that that. That it was all, it was all, everything was brought to the open. And when you come out of that room, I'll tell you what, you would be like, wow, man, I didn't know all this stuff from, from childhood to relatives back curses that I drug with me and I didn't know I had them. And, but I would advise you to, to sign up for these classes privately. It's all confidential, and I'm telling you that it is awesome. But anyway, I, I'll stop. I know we got to go, go to work tomorrow. So thank you very much, Sister uh, Donna and Brother Dan. Um, I guess this was the end of the, of the series. So if, y'all, if you're watching live and you have any questions, just call the office. And, and uh, if y'all like some more information on this, and, uh, but... Uh, Thank Lord for the Holy Ghost. I think there's a song that is that says, Thank Lord for the Holy Ghost. It's been a long time since I heard it. But anyway, let's let's uh if y'all want to stand up, I want to dismiss you. And we thank you. Thank you everyone for coming out tonight. Father, we thank you, Lord. And and Lord, we just thank you for for your spirit, Lord, that just so richly comes and helps us in time of need. Sometimes we don't when we don't feel like praying, we we don't feel like praising, we don't we don't even feel like paying our bills, Lord. You convict us. You speak to us, Lord. And Father, I just uh Lord, I just thank you for that. I just thank you for for that work, Lord, that uh, that that Holy Spirit that work in us, Lord, and and direct us and strengthen us and 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 just shows up in in that right time, Lord. When all everything seems to fall apart, Lord. Thank you for the Holy Ghost that is always there to strengthen us. And Father, as we leave tonight, Father, I just pray, Lord, go with us, go with us, Lord, as we enter into that uh, outside these doors, Lord, that we would be the uh, that we would be the hope into our communities, Father. We thank you in the name of Jesus. We pray. And everyone says. Amen. You're dismissed.